Hello YouTube, this is Matt Pullen. Sometimes uh, when you have rookened two connected pawns against uh, just a rook, the win is easy. Uh, you put the rook in front of the two pawns and they form like a steamroller that uh, moves gradually down the board and eventually takes control over the queening square. Uh, White didn't even need to use his king in this example. But uh, other times uh, the win can be trickier, like this uh, study by uh, Fila. Uh, here, black actually has a good defense. Uh, uh, the black king is nestled in between the two pawns, you know, which hampers their ability to push. The, uh, the white rook is in a very uh, awkward position on the short side of the pawn. Uh, not a lot of room to maneuver over here. The black rook, however, is on the long side of the pawn. And uh, what do I mean by the long side and the short side of the pawn? Well, take this past pawn that white has. Uh, the, on the queen side, there are four squares you know, in between this pawn and the side of the board. And on the king side, there are three. So uh, the side with more squares, in this case the queen side, would be the long side of the pawn, where black's rook has an active position. So uh, in order to win this position, uh, white is going to have to improve the position of uh, you know, his rook and his king. I mean, a logical looking try would be to play king d7, you know, uh, gaining uh, more power on the queen square, e8. But if this, then black would launch an, a, a series of checks from the long side of the pawn, starting with rook a7. And this forces the white king to either find shelter somewhere or you know, move over to the b-file and attack the black rook. So, uh, so what do you think you would play here? See if, uh, pause the video and see if you can figure this position out. What would your plan be? I mean, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of things that go in your favor when you have the two pawns. But what's, uh, what's the best idea here? Okay, the best idea in this position is to uh, sacrifice one of the pawns in order to gain a uh, winning uh, rook and pawn versus rook ending. I mean, easier said than done, you really have to know your rook and pawn versus rook endings very well in order to pull this off. But the key move is rook h1. Uh, the white rook prepares to move to a better, you know, more aggressive position you know, on the e or f file, you know, supporting the white past pawns. Now, the uh, main objection to rook h1 is that it allows black to take this pawn. Uh, there's really nothing better to do. I mean, black can play king e6 if he wants to, but then there's uh, rook e1 check, for which, uh, due to the threat of queening the pawn, forces king f7, and now king d6. And uh, due to the time constraints in this video, I'm not going to show this line. The basic idea is that this white king, to avoid the checks from the black rook, will run all the, all the way over here to the short side of the pawn. And so this forces uh, black to put his uh, king and rook on the uh, queening square, e8, at which point uh, white is going to promote the pawn, sacrificing it, and then after a trade of heavy pieces on e8, he'll come to g7 with his king, and uh, you know win with the remaining f pawn. But we'll, for this video, we're just going to look at uh, rook h1, king takes f6. Now we've transposed to a uh, rook and one pawn versus rook ending. Also, black is threatening to uh, to capture the remaining white pawn on e7. Now, in order to protect this pawn, uh, white could bring the rook behind the pawn, rook e1, but then black plays king f7. And in order to uh, you know, gain another attacker on the queen and square, white needs to play something like king d7, right? But then black uh, launches his attack from the long side, rook a7 check. And uh, this position is actually drawn. If the white king comes away from the pawn, then black just tucks his king on e8 you know, blockading it, and uh, is an easy draw. But instead, instead of bringing the rook uh, behind the pawn to protect it, white has a much stronger move. Can you find it? All right, in this position, white plays rook to a1, 
Rook to a1 brings these two rooks into conflict. It uh, you know threatens rook takes a8, and it prevents black from throwing a check on uh, the a file. So it sort of takes away the advantage of the rook on the long side of the pawn. Now, white is trying to deflect this black rook. For instance, if rook takes a1, then uh, you know the rook the rook was controlling the queening square. So white would just queen the pawn, and uh, white is going to win with queen against rook. So instead, uh, see, what can black do? Well, black needs to move the rook. The problem is there aren't really any good squares to move the rook to. All these squares are ruled out. So, I mean, the black rook could move to g8 or h8. Now let's say it moves to h8. Now there's king d7 threatening to queen the pawn. Only way to stop this is to play king f7. And then white plays rook f7 check, forcing the king off of the f file. And then white is going to queen next. So, uh, see, rook h8 is no good. Rook takes a1 is no good. Rook e8 is the best try. Now, if the white king comes to d7, black is just going to play rook takes check. So, white king can't come to, to uh, d7. The king can come to d6, however. This protects the pawn because if rook takes, then rook to uh, f1 check and the uh, the black king can't hold on to the rook. So instead uh, black has to play something else. Let's say he plays uh, king f7. Well in this case white still plays rook f1 check pulling the king off of the f file. After king g7, king d7 and white wins easily. So uh, let's see Rook b8, you know, possibly uh, preparing to, you know, throw some more checks on the white king is another possibility. If rook b8, then white plays uh, the rook f1 check, forcing the king to come off of the f file. And now king c7. Uh, I verified uh, that rook e1 also wins, but king c7 is a lot simpler. King c7 attacks the black rook. Again, not a lot of useful squares to go to. I mean, if uh, if the rook comes to e8, then just king d7 wins, as we've already seen. So, say the rook goes to a8. Now, if uh, if white plays king d7 to uh, you know prepare the queen of the pawn, black actually draws by initiating the uh, you know the checks from the long side of the pawn. You know, check, check, check check. And then say, uh, I mean, if the king comes here, then the rook just comes behind the pawn and black wins the pawn. So, and if the white king comes too far away, then black just, you know, you know, encircles the pawn and then he'll approach with his king if white defends with the rook. So, yeah, the winning idea is not king to d7. In fact, it's an idea we've already seen in this video. Rook a1. Again, uh, challenging the outside file with the rook. And if, uh, if rook takes a1, then just queen. So what's going on here? Uh, the, only, the difference between this and the previous position where we played rook a1 is the king is not on f6. So if, uh, if the rook goes to h8, I mean, king d7, king f7, rook f1 check wins. So say the rook goes to e8 instead. Well, now we have king d7, you know, king f7, rook f1 check, driving the king away winning. So yeah, that is how uh, we force the win by transposing to a winning uh, rook and pawn ending. Thank you for watching.